It's so excited to see you all today. Thank you. And let's all pray before we start our service today. Dear Lord, once again, we bow before your holy presence. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time. We thank you for this time, for this beautiful day that thou has given unto us, Lord. We thank you for the service that has just finished. And we thank you as we go into our second service today, Lord. We pray for those who have made their time and are here today. I thank you for your blessing upon them, Lord. And also those who are on their way, may they have their safe journey and they'll be present here today. And we thank you for all the online viewers. May you bless them as the service continues. And we thank you for your leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit just lead the service and whatever is going to happen, we just commit it in your hands. We thank you and we praise you for this beautiful time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's just celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. This is the song. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. He is risen. And because He is risen, we are alive. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have new, found new life in Him. So let's all uh, clap our hands and just worship and rejoice today. Because He's a good God. of heaven. He has victory over death. He has victory over everything that we come across. He himself said, don't worry when we face 
difficulties in this world, but he has overcome this world. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Let's sing this song and get the right key. Awesome. Awesome God. to the grave and from the grave to the sky he went to heaven and he's seated right at the right hand of God right now interceding for us hallelujah the Lord will lift your name on high that is why we are here to lift his name that is why we exist our life should honor and lift his name on high
are my strength. No one else and nothing else will do. You are our hope and our strength. Lord, you are our way. You are all that we need. Father, we just come before your presence today with thanksgiving in our hearts. 
knowing oh lord that you are in total control of our lives you are in total control of the situations that we may find ourselves in and lord there is nothing that is hidden from you everything is known to you and thank you lord for for the love that you have shown towards us and it is your love that binds us together it is your love that has drawn us out of our homes this morning into this place where we can come and experience more of your love more of your presence more of the joy that we find in your name more oh lord of the fellowship that we can have with each other knowing that we are all bound together as one family in the lord jesus christ so this morning we thank you we thank you for your son jesus who died on the cross for our sins and we thank you that today lord we can be victorious in our lives knowing that the blood of jesus has washed away our sins help us oh lord that we'll be holy just like you that will be our desire oh god that every day we will draw closer to you that we will aim to be more and more like you to take heed of your word to take heed of your instructions in our lives and to follow after you father we thank you for everyone that is here for those who are listening to us online that your presence will be with them lord that we'll search our hearts and see the things that needs to go from our lives that we'll remove them we'll seek your forgiveness we'll make things right with you and lord that we'll spend more and more time on our knees praying and reaching out to you thank you lord for everyone that is here we give the service into your hands we pray that your holy spirit will continue to lead us and guide us today as we get ready to hear from your servant Lord may your word take root in our hearts may it bring changes in our lives may it mold us oh god that we'll only not be listeners but we'll be doers of your word that we'll hear your your word today and we'll go back and we'll change and we'll make changes in our lifestyles so that it will bring benefit to us and at the same time we'll bring glory to your name we thank you for your servant we pray that your hand will continue to be upon him as he comes to minister your word may your empowerment of your holy spirit continue to overflow may your physical strength spiritual strength continue to overflow in his life that every word that will be spoken to us it will be from you today thank you holy spirit for being here with us we give you total control of this service in our lives in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah praise the lord amen. praise the lord Shall we give a clap of thanks to the Lord and thank him for this beautiful day? We'd like to welcome everybody into the house of the Lord and uh, I'm sure that you all are excited because it is time to hear the living word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We don't miss eating food. Well, people like me, we don't eat miss eating food. So this is the food that we should not also miss. Our spiritual food, we must be empowered. And while our senior pastor is coming, let me just briefly tell you that last year, um, last yesterday, sorry, uh, we had our church annual general meeting, and once again, the church, the floor, all of us, all of you, we have decided that our senior pastor will continue for an indefinite period to be our senior pastor. That was a confirmation again that this is what the church wants, and we all agree. So let's just congratulate him once more. He is the founder of this church. and he will continue to lead and continue to be our senior pastor and we'll see him every year back here on the stage fit and fine and we are so grateful to god for giving him good health thank you very much let's give him my hand once more please thank you and it's a uh... beautiful day good to see all of you here this morning and uh if you uh <clears throat> didn't come here yesterday you missed a wonderful time during the um the annual business meeting those who came we enjoyed it and then we also enjoyed some delicious plow you missed it <laughs> anyway it was good to have everybody out here and uh, we I want to thank you for your faithfulness meeting all the being part of this church and being a member of this church we are so glad all of you 
in whichever way you have helped and just your presence means a lot to us being over here. Thank God for it. We want to see <clears throat> greater things than this year and it will happen as we uh, put our hands together and uh, worship the Lord and do things together for the glory of God and the full progress of the church. We want to see greater things happen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I will uh, give a few it's a teaching like and some of the basic things that we have put as our theme for this month. And you'll see in the bulletin right in the front page, it says prayer. Prayer is the theme that we'll be talking about this month. Every speaker that will be speaking will talk on prayer, give us a little bit more uh, insight and the importance of prayer. So this morning, <clears throat> I want us to look at Psalm 55. Psalm 55. We're not going to read the whole uh, chapter, but um, Psalm 55, if you read that, you will see that David is uh, making a lot of complaints and he's saying a lot of things about what's happening to him and how people have mistreated him and they uh, cursed him and did all kinds of evil things um, to him. And right through that chapter, you'll read that. But then when you come to verse 15, 14 and 15, we're going to look at that one. Uh, this is what he says as he uh, goes over all the difficulties he faced, all the persecutions, all the bad things that was done to him. And then he comes to verse 15. He says, let death seize them. Those people who were misusing him and, and treating him badly, saying bad things about him, he says that. He came to that low position in his life, low down position. Let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. This was the lowest point for David. And all the difficulties that he was facing, all the persecution that he was facing. Now then, let's look at verse 16, what he says. This is the important verse. I want you to mark this verse in your Bible. As for me, he says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Praise the Lord. That's his conclusion. Of all the difficulties he's faced, let them do what is. Let them go to hell. Let them suffer. But for me, I will call on the Lord. And then he says, evening and morning and at noon, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. That's verse 17. That is the important part, these two verses. Evening and morning and noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. After all the difficulties he faced, this is his conclusion. As for me, I will call upon the name of the Lord. The thought that I want to present today is the privilege of prayer. Privilege of prayer. <clears throat> and as I said, after feeling downcast, after feeling defeated, after having all what he had to suffer, he comes and says, he remembers the privilege of prayer. He remembers that the teachings that he had received about prayer. Unfortunately, even today, many of us <clears throat> uh, forget, the, forget this uh, tremendous blessing that God has given to us. We forget the glorious privilege we have to pray that belongs to all the children of God to pray to be able to pray, to take your needs before the Lord. This is a glorious privilege that God has given to us as children of God. We have this pri privilege that is unequal to anything else in the world. The privilege to pray, to bring our need before the Lord, our difficulties, our problems before the Lord. And this is the privilege that God gives to us. And I will look into it very quickly and just briefly things that are important 
One of the things that the prayer allows, God has uh, given us this ability to talk to him. Prayer allows us access to God. When we pray, it's not just, you know, it's just a um, waste of time or anything like that. I want you to know that when we pray, we are addressing the creator God, the one who created this universe. This is whom we are praying, the living God, living Jesus Christ. It's not a dead thing. It's not an idol. It's not a, it's just some man that you are addressing. No, you are addressing a living God. It allows access to it. In Ephesians 3.20, we, uh, can we put that up? In Ephesians 3.20, the verse there. Um, Ephesians 3.20 talks about, how, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. He's referring to God. The next verse. 31. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. So here he is addressing the creator God, the one who is all powerful, the one who hears our prayers, the one who does more than what we expect. More than what we expect, he does it for us. Even more than we, it doesn't matter what it is. He does it for us. Prayer also brings us into his presence. And I want you to know that in, in uh, Hebrews we read, he says, come, let's go into the very presence of God. That's what he's done. Now, how is it possible? In the olden days, when the Jewish were there, they were Jewish people, they went to the temple. They could not go into the Holy of Holies. They could not go into his presence. Only one person once in a year used to go. But you know what? When Jesus died on the cross, he opened the doors to the Holy of Holies, to the very presence of God once and for all. He died on the cross. And if you read that uh, portion there, you'll see the temple curtain was broken, uh, split in two, allowed access to the Holy of Holies for anyone to go there at any time. That's what Jesus did for us. He brings us into the very presence of God. And in Hebrews, we have the invitation to come. Let's go to the grace, to, to the very presence of God. And uh, he will take care of us. So that door has been opened. See, when we pray, we pray because we know that Jesus is with us. When we accepted Jesus Christ, he came and became part of us. He lives within us. We got born again and Jesus is there with us, in us. So when we pray, we know that we are in Jesus. We know that he hears my prayer. Uh, he intercedes and at that moment, today, we know the scriptures tell us that he intercedes for us. He's there in the presence of God, talking for us, pleading for us. And um, that is why we should have no fear of getting into the very presence of God. Because he opened the door, he made us to go into that very presence of God when the curtain was broken and holy of holies. This is why today we say that it is a privilege. We can go to the Lord at any time with any of our needs we can go into his presence, no fear at all. This is an invitation from Jesus Christ to come into his presence. God invites us to come before him. In Psalm 50, verse 15, we read, can you, um, I'm sorry, I don't give it to them, but Psalm 50, verse 15. What does it say there? Psalm, verse, Psalm 50, verse 15. In the time, days of difficulty, we can call on him. And he will hear us. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. You see, this is an invitation given to us by Jesus Christ himself, by God himself, that we can go to him at any time, any of our needs. Call upon me in the day of my trouble 
Don't run here and there. Don't go to any man or any one else like that. But you come to God. He invites you. That is his invitation. Come to me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. That's his assurance. Isn't that wonderful? To have that kind of assurance to go to someone who definitely, purposely says, I will do it for you. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. And that's the important part. When he delivers us, we need to glorify God for the good things he has done for us. So we have an invitation, a royal invitation from God to come into his presence and find deliverance. And then this uh, privilege of prayer is available for all believers. He does not say that only these people can do, only that people. No, it's for all believers. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, you can enter into his presence at any time. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we think that uh, prayer is only for, uh, for uh, spiritual giants, you know, some, uh, some big people, some well-known people, some people who are uh, been in the ministry for a long time or pastors of large church or something like that. Uh, they think that prayer is only for those people. They feel um, it's only for them to pray and get answers. But I want you to know it's not for them <coughs> only. <coughs> Prayer is for anybody. All, everybody can go to him at any time you want to. All believers. <coughs> Many great prayers in the Bible. You'll see that prayer in the Bible came out of people who were just ordinary people. Uh, just to name a few, you know Hannah in the book of uh, Samuel. Hannah was just an ordinary lady, desperate to have a baby, and she prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed, and God answered her prayer um, and gave her a son. We know the, the publican in the, in, the, in the New Testament, he told this story, uh, how that uh, he went to the place of prayer, and there was a rich, wealthy, proud man. And he was talking about it. He says, I'm so and so and I've done this and that and that kind of thing. But this uh, humble publican, the tax collector, just bowed his head. He said, I'm not like him. I'm, I'm just an ordinary person. I'm a sinner. Have mercy on me. And Jesus said, that person went away blessed than the other one who was so proud. So... You can see that even a tax collector in those days were considered to be sinners. His prayer was answered. Then we look at the, the thief on the cross. There are many others, but I'm just bringing out a few for your attention. This thief was condemned. Condemned for wrongdoings. He was condemned for stealing or cheating or whatever it was. He was on the cross to die. He was punished. But on the cross, while dying... He turns around to Jesus and says, have mercy on me. Remember me when you get into your father's kingdom. And then my prayer was answered. And Jesus said, yes, today I, you will be with me in my kingdom. So you see, prayer can be for anybody at all. Don't ever think that you have no right to pray. There are people who think. They've been a Christian for a long time. They come and they believe in Jesus, but when it comes to prayer, they feel, no, no, I can't pray. I want somebody else to pray for me. I want you to know that you have a right to pray. You can pray at any time, anywhere, for anything. God calls on you to pray. Pray for yourself. Not only for yourself, you pray for your family. <clears throat> pray for your family, pray for them. The needs of your family, your family needs you don't have to go here and there. You don't have to go to the pastor. You don't have to go to that man. But you can pray because you have the right to pray for your own family. <coughs> you can pray for the community where you live in. There are people in the community that may be suffering, that have need, that are in difficult times. You can pray for them. You can pray for them. The church needs your prayers. And this is where I think we lack a lot in this church here. When it comes time to pray, invite people to pray, very few come, on, like on Tuesday night. We say, look, people come for prayer. 
Some people come, not enough. We need to have more time in prayer. We need to take more time out to pray for things in the church and other uh, needs of the people. We need to pray for the unbelievers and only prayer will bring result. Prayer is a privilege that is given to us, a wonderful privilege. And we need to exercise that. We need to practice that. We need to make use of it. You have a privilege of doing anything. You need to make use of it so that there will be a result. When you <clears throat> come to pray, we, re we learn from the Bible. When you pray, we anticipate that God will answer. We anticipate God will answer. That's why I come to pray. If I say to you, ask you to pray, we have an idea, we have a thought, we have a hope that that prayer will be answered. That's why we come to the Lord. We anticipate prayer. Prayer is a privilege because he has promised that he will hear and will answer. That's his promise. That he will hear and answer. We read that in the scriptures there. So never doubt that your prayers are in vain. This should give us a lot of confidence when we pray. We don't just talk in the air. We don't just, you know, babble away something. We don't talk to someone who cannot hear. We don't talk to someone who cannot speak back to us. But we come to God with full confidence that God, when I open my mouth in prayer, I know you're going to hear me and you're going to answer. Whichever way you'll answer. It may not be the way I want it, but God will answer one way or the other and there will be results. God wants us to pray, God wants to answer prayers. Even more than we think, he wants to give us what we need. Do the things that we want to be done. It's, sometimes we don't expect it. We feel that, no, no, God is not going to do this. But no, God is going to do it. Prayer of faith is possible. Prayer is something that will achieve the impossible. Through prayer, we release the supernatural power and the supernatural things in the world. It's through prayer. When you pray, supernatural things will happen. You know, I'll just quickly uh, go through a few. You know the story of uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel. There was all these worshippers of Baal and other uh, worshippers were there. They were having these problems. And uh, they, <clears throat> they came and they started praying. And all of this, I don't know how many hundreds of uh, um, idol worshippers Bells or worshippers came and they were praying for rain and they cried out and cried out and um, for whole day long and when the prayer didn't come and Elijah began to tease them and he says, oh, maybe your God is gone on a holiday or is sleeping somewhere. He cannot hear you. And they began to cut themselves, do all kinds of things. They were doing all that thing to get an answer. But, you know, Elijah believed that God would do a miracle. And when they finished, he tells them, take away everything, make the art, pour some more water on it. And all he said, God, see them. I want the fire to come down. I'm sort of a, uh, uh, putting it in simple language. And God just prayed a simple prayer. Uh, Elijah prayed a simple prayer. Send the fire, Lord. And the fire came down from God and burnt the sacrifice, burned the stone, burned all the water that was there. Everything was burnt because of that simple prayer. So you see that it was uh, something that was impossible to happen, but it happened because Elijah had believed. You know the story of Abraham praying for Sodom. Sodom was condemned by God because of sin, but Adam, Adam Abraham prayed and a miracle happened over there. We know what Moses when he led the children of Israel, he needed help and he prayed and God helped them in, in, in uh, his delivery. We know about Jesus praying, uh, all the multitude that was there. They didn't have any food to eat and Jesus prayed and the multitude were fed. 
Then I said, I said, the thief on the cross, he prayed for himself and he was delivered uh, on the cross where, uh, with the assurance from Jesus that today you'll be with me. So you can see that the impossible things were made possible, were achieved because of faith and prayer by ordinary people. Many of us here today are still living today because of the impossible things that has happened in our lives. Maybe some of you were severe with sickness. Maybe you were about to die. Maybe you had all kinds of problems. Maybe you didn't have any money. Maybe you didn't have jobs. But you prayed. You prayed. And you are here today because of prayer being answered. So it was an impossible thing happened in your life that you are alive today and God is doing some wonderful things through you because you have believed. And I assure you that doesn't matter what it is, God is there. Never say God cannot do it. Prayer is a privilege. It is the ability to achieve the impossible. Impossible things will happen through prayer or faith. You know, I just uh, look at this little boy standing, sitting there, Raphael. I know he's going through some difficult time, but he knows God will heal him. We prayed for him for months and months. Today he's sitting over here. But you know one thing I remember about him is I led there. The doctors were treating him. They're doing all kinds of things to him. And he told the doctor, he said, you can't do anything. Jesus is going to heal me. You know, he's going through a difficult time. You won't know it. But I believe God is healing him. God will do a mighty miracle, the impossible thing. The doctors have given up. They looked at x-rays. They did the surgery. It says everything is fine. But there is some problem there. Only God can do it. Amen. Nobody else. And he's here today. His faith, that little faith of his is so wonderful. He told the doctors, you can't do it. God will do it for me. Jesus will heal him. Heal him. That is the power of prayer and faith. And if we can have faith like that, we'll be able to rejoice and pray and do great things. Never say God cannot do it. It's a privilege. Prayer is a privilege. It has the ability to achieve the impossible. What they said was impossible. He's alive and doing over here and he'll be well and strong. God is going to use him mightily. And that is the story of many of you here today. You may have gone through this kind of things, but it was prayer that brought you out and delivered you. Prayer can be effective when you are not physically present there. Prayer can reach out to places where you are not there. You know, on Tuesday nights, we, we pray for a lot of people. We put the names on top. Many of them are not here. Some of them are overseas. They call and say, please pray for me. Some of other parts of this country, they call, they say pray. We put their names up on the screen and the church prays for them. And then we hear results. We get messages to us. You know, I'm healed. Thank you for praying for me. I've got this thing that I wanted. And I, because we are here. They are somewhere else. Prayer can reach out. Prayer can reach out. In the places we cannot go physically, prayer can go. Your faith can go and do great things. That is why we need prayer warriors in this church. We had one time a group who called it prayer warriors. They used to come regularly and pray weekly here, but then it fizzled off. When it comes to prayer, we need to get a little bit more active, more active in prayer. Have prayer warriors doing great things, which is so essential in a church. Some people with whom we can reach, please pray for this person. There's somebody who's having difficulty. We want you to pray for them. And there's someone available all the time to pray, and you'll find that great things will happen. True power of prayer, result of prayer is not 
on the preacher, not on me as a pastor, not on any pastor, not any person at all. Not in a church, not in a denomination. The real source of power is, is with you in your prayer closet, in your prayer time. When you get down to pray, even though at your home, in the church, wherever you are, you take time to come, separate yourself and say, look, I'm going to pray at this particular time. This is my time. This is my place for prayer. And you will find that great things will happen and there will be people um, effective, affected through your prayers. But we need to make a determination. Yes, okay, prayer is important and I will take time to pray. Prayer opens doors. Where doors are closed, nothing happens. It's praying and God moves in a very mysterious way. When there are evil things happening in your life, in your, uh, in your family or whatever it might be, it's prayer that results in victory. When people are sick, and I know there are people that were sick over here, and prayer was done, and they were healed because of the power of Jesus Christ. Sinners are convicted because of people praying. Sinners are convicted. I want you to know that prayer works. Prayer works. Whether you like it or not, prayer works. Try it out and see. Whatever the situation might be, pray and ask God for answers. Our need is for more people to pray. And you know, amazing things can happen if all of us can get together and say, look, we will spend time in prayer at this time, uh, any place at home or come here in the church to pray. Things will happen, great things will happen because we collectively, unitedly determined to pray, become prayer warriors for the Lord. Whatever we do in the Christian life, we need to pray. Ask the Lord to guide us in that. Pray about it. You're going to school, pray about your school. Pray, you're going to work, pray that God would give you wisdom and understanding. You are traveling or doing something out for the Lord. Pray, 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 and you'll find that God will do great things in and through your life. Being useful in his kingdom, if you want to be useful in his kingdom, you must make prayer and make use of the privilege that God has given to you, and that is prayer. If you want to be effective, if you want to be involved in the ministry, if you want to do some great things for the Lord, don't just do it. Don't just feel, well, I've got the education, I'm an educated person, I am mobility, I'm experienced, and I can do it. It won't happen. It has to be done by prayer. We read in the scripture, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So if you want to do anything great for the Lord, doesn't matter what it is, small thing, big thing, great things, effective, whatever it is, you want it to be effective, make sure that you pray about it and pray and pray and pray. <clears throat> Prayer is a sort of advertisement. We advertise. We see that even in the case of Elijah when he prayed, great miracle happened and what, what had happened? God was glorified. People over there, they began to glorify God. Prayer advertises the greatness as few other things do. When you pray, things happen and that's an advertisement of the power of God, the effectiveness of God. Prayer declares his grace. Grace that allows sinners to find forgiveness. That happens through prayer. God's grace is seen when a sinner converts and gives his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's an advertisement. When a person gets saved from the wilderness and the all kinds of filthy life, you pray and you pray for that person and he gets, gets saved, that's a glorifying God. That's an advertisement. And people will know, hey, man, that fellow got saved because of Jesus Christ. Or some people prayed his life has changed. Prayer 
declares God's goodness. He is willing to hear our prayers. Doesn't matter what happens. He is willing to hear our prayers. And when he hears our prayers, we are glorifying God's goodness. We are advertising the goodness of God. We, we declare the greatness of God. Not only goodness of God, but the greatness of God. Prayer shows to us that he is one who is worthy before whom we can bow. He is great. He is mighty. He is wonderful. He is creator. And prayer announces that, reveals that, advertises that. Prayer declares his glory. It's through the avenue of prayer that God reveals himself. His purpose, whatever he has to do. And prayer unleashes the mighty, the almighty power of God. It's through prayer we see these things. It declares his glory. And prayer, as, as, a, as a believer, as you pray, you might say, well, I can't do it. I can't. Prayer says, I can't. But I know one who can. I can't. It's my feeling, but I know one who can. Isn't that wonderful? To know that person who can do it for us. And that is reaching to him with prayer. Prayer is a privilege because it gives us opportunity to exalt our heavenly father by their, by their simple willingness to place their faith in God and the saints honor him. Friends, God has given us a wonderful tool and that is prayer. He has shown us. And Jesus himself said that you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That is the assurance we have. That is the prayer. And he assured that, that if we do it, he will answer. So we have this tool of prayer. Unfortunately, we are not using it as much as we should. We're not spending time in prayer as much as we should. We are all guilty of that. And I believe that now is the time that we should wake up and get down on our knees and prayer closet and begin to pray, begin realizing that things will only happen as we come before him. And God is a God of, who will answer prayers. We have results before us. There will be, if I ask for testimonies, there will be testimonies who will say, yes, I had this problem, I had that problem, and prayer was made. And I am healed today because of God's mighty power in my life. So, prayer is a privilege for God's saints. We must make use of it. If we exercise this great gift, we can impact the earth for heaven. It only will happen when we rise up and say, okay, we will take time to pray and not just sit back. And uh, we can reach beyond today and tomorrow. Prayer is a great privilege, and we need to exercise it and use it. As I said, that things will happen when we pray. Never doubt that, never underweight that. You might feel it can't be done, but there is one who will do it for you. You might feel that nobody bothers about you, but remember, God knows, and he will answer prayer. And that is up to you to come to him in prayer, believing that God would do great and mighty things. So this morning I have very briefly and uh, quickly brought to your attention the importance of prayer and what prayer can do in our lives, in your life, in your family life, in your community, wherever it is, prayer can do great things if we will believe and apply it and we'll know that God will do great and mighty things. Let's have a faith like that little boy there we are able to say to the doctors that you can't do it, but Jesus will do it. That's the kind of faith we have, we need to have. So this morning, let's all stand and we'll think about this and pray before we go to the communion. Put our, uh, make our, bring our attention to the importance of prayer. Hallelujah, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And let's make a commitment today as we come to take part in the communion, 
like make a decision that I will spend time in prayer, whatever it is, wherever it is, for whatever purpose, because the Lord has opened the door for us, the entrance to his presence, there is no more obstruction. We can go to him at any time, anywhere, anything, he is willing to hear our prayers. It's up to us to go to him. So this morning as we prepare ourselves to take communion, let's make some decision. Lord, help me. I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to spend more time in prayer. And bless the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. As the helpers come forward. reading from the scriptures where it gives us direction about the communion, the Lord's Supper. Paul writing this says, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you do in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the Lord of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those are the instructions given to us about the Lord's Supper. Let's close your eyes and meditate upon Jesus, what he said. I just want to remind you that this communion is for all believers. If you have left your old life, old religion, and you are following Jesus, abiding by the teachings, you can participate in the Holy Communion, and God will bless you. But the important thing we learn here is this, that we are to self-examine and know what we are doing. We are doing it as unto the Lord for what he has done for us. We're doing it in remembrance of him, of the suffering, of the difficulty that he did. So at the moment, I'll give you a few moments to do a search of your heart, search your heart and ask the Lord to help you. If there have been any wrongdoings, anything that's hindering your connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, confess it before him for the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all your sins. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you loved us first, which we were not capable of that. And Lord, we thank you that that love is what made you send your son Jesus for us. And Lord, for that provision that you made, that through Jesus we can find grace and favor, we can find ourselves in your presence. So thank you, Lord. We, we don't have anything to offer but our lives to you. Lord, we thank you. And as we stand here 
in this front of this table lord we are grateful and humbly we thank you and uh, lord we remember the the pain and the suffering we may not understand or experience it but you suffered so that we don't have, we won't have to suffer so thank you lord and we we thank you for this communion i pray that your blessings will be on each one and on this communion as we uh, take part in this and lord that we may never forget the price that you paid so that we can be your sons and your daughters thank you lord we give you all the praise and glory in jesus name we pray amen amen you may be seated we'll pass the bread and the a cup and you take it and hold it in your hands and then we'll all participate together i'm forgiven because you were forsaken i'm accepted you were condemned i
Praise God. Would you all stand with me now, please? As you hold the bread in your hand, close your eyes and for a few moments, concentrate upon the presence of the Lord. Jesus committed himself and died on the cross. His body was, body was brutalized, ill-treated, crown of thorns. They put, pulled his beard out, spat upon him, and his back eventually looked like a plowed field. But he says, this is all for you and for your goodness and for your health. So he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you take it, you do it in remembrance of me. And as we hold the bread in our hand, just reflect on what Jesus went through. The torture, the pain, the suffering, the ridicule, the shame, all of that, he said, it's all for you so that you can escape the punishment of sin. And he took the bread and gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat this. Do it as often as you do it in remembrance of me. At this moment, we remember what Jesus went through and let's partake of the bread and give him praise, worship him. Thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for the price that you paid. We thank you for the body that was broken. We thank you, Lord, that because of that we find healing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then he took the cup and he gave it to the disciples and take, take this. This is my blood which is shed for him. It was a sacrificial blood. And the blood was an important part in sacrifice. This blood was accepted and by, Jesus, by God the Father. And he said, if anyone will repent and confess his sins and believe in Jesus who died on the cross and rose again, all their sins will be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus took the cup and gave it to them to drink and said, drink all of it in remembrance of me. This is my blood shed for you. Let's all do it together, remembering what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Give him glory. Give him thanks and praise. For he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. He is mighty, he is wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the price you paid. Thank you, Lord, for making the provision for us to escape from sin. And made provision that we might come to you. Thank you. Thank you for the price you paid. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated now. As the glass is being collected, we'll take up the missions offering. If you have brought your offering missions, this offering that we collect on the first Sunday is not used in the church, but it goes to outside Bible college, foreign missions, orphans in different country, and uh, our workers in other parts of Fiji that we support and various other things, poor people. This missions offering goes towards that. So if you have brought your missions offering, you can bring it and leave it over here, and God bless you for it. So very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Is it the love of God so very wonderful? Wonderful is love to me so high, it's so high, you can't get 
what we're going to do is, uh, before we hear the announcements and all that, we're going to have a special prayer for Raphael. Uh, Sanjeev, can you bring him over? The boy needs us. He wants us to pray. Hallelujah. He is receiving the healing. We are going to thank God for healing. Uh, some of you don't know it, but he's gone through a lot of difficult time. Lots of tests and this thing and that thing. And doctors say this and that and then finally say, no, there is nothing wrong with him. And uh, today he's here with us. It's a clear touch that God has blessed him. Let's all stand. Would you stand with me and just stretch forth your hand towards him. Come, stretch. Stretch forth your hand toward him. Hey, boy. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a very strong and brave boy. God has touched him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Raphael. We thank you, Lord, that uh, for some reason that is not known to us, that he's going through all this difficulty, the pain and suffering. Even the doctors have given up. They don't find any fault with him. But Lord God Almighty, there is nothing hidden from you. You know it. And we know that you have touched him. We know that you will completely heal him as a testimony of your power, of your healing power. And even at this moment, Lord, I pray that your healing virtue will flow through this body, every organ of this body, touch him and deliver him, make him strong, O oh Lord, honor his faith and glorify yourself and bless him, O oh Lord, and make him a mighty instrument in your hand for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, we welcome you all in the name of Jesus. And I uh, know you've been blessed today. And uh, let's welcome uh, our online viewers. And we also have uh, some visitors with us. And uh, I'll just read out the names. Uh, we have uh, Lavinia and Dirua and the kids. Uh, Right. Uh, they, they came and visited us uh, the, in our Fijian Itoke service uh, last week. And I uh, welcome you all. God bless you. Thank you for being here again and, uh, in our English service. Sorry, I needed my glasses to see properly. Uh, and we also have uh, Moses. Mo yes, at the back. Yeah? Just wave your hands. We'd like to welcome you uh, from Nandera. Uh, God bless you, brother. Thank you for being with us. And we also have uh, Nafisa sitting right here. Uh, let's welcome her. Uh, she's here with Sweeney and them. So thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you for being here. And I know you've been blessed, all of you. And uh, we give God all the glory. So the announcements uh, for this week. Um, Tuesday is our prayer. Time we spend in prayer from 7 p.m. And as Pastor said, you know, we need to spend time in prayer. And Tuesday we've allocated for prayer, corporate prayer. We come together in unity and we spend time in prayer. So um, take our time, Tuesday, 7 p.m. And then uh, our other midweek services has not really started yet. We just had our uh, annual general meeting yesterday and uh, uh, the board of deacons have been uh, appointed. And so, uh, so in the next coming week or so, uh, all the other uh, the, the departments and the ministries will be all organized for this coming year. And, uh, and um, keep watching this space, like they say. Uh, and we want you all to be involved in the various ministries. We have uh, cell group meetings. We call it life group meetings. And we have, on Thursdays, we have uh, youth, we have men's ministries and women's ministries on Fridays. And then uh, we have our worship team uh, as well. We have uh, Sunday school. Uh, and, and there's so much more going on in our assembly. And we want... Uh, us all to be involved in it. Don't, don't be just uh, spectators on the stand. You want to be on the field. You want to be kicking the ball around. You want to be scoring goals. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So um, um, uh, while I'm speaking on that, we will have a sheet uh, 
paper at the back. So after the service, if you, uh, you know, if you are interested in being part of any ministry or you, you have uh, some talent or you, even if you're not sure what you want to be involved with, but you want to uh, be used, you want to do something for the Lord. So there'll be a paper at the back. Before you leave, you write your name and number and, and whichever area you, you feel you can be used. And uh, don't worry about the positions or titles or what. Just say, Lord, I'm available and I want to be part of something. So even if you're not sure what, just write your name and number. We'll know and uh, senior pastor will go through it and then uh, he'll ca- contact you and see where you can fit in in our assembly. Even if it's, if you say you want to clean the hall every week, praise the Lord. That's a ministry of serving. So it doesn't matter. The, the, the main thing is, you are available to do something for the Lord. That's the important part. Praise the Lord. So remember, before you go, just write your name at the back. And, um, okay, and then uh, coming Sunday, our our regular services, 8.30 is our Hindi service and 11 o'clock is is our English service. Sunday school, uh, they have combined Sunday school right now uh, um, in the first uh, first service from 8.30. Um, and uh, we will, um, we're still organizing our Sunday school. Uh, some teachers have left and we're trying to organize that. And once all that is said, we will start Sunday school uh, in, uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, formal Sunday school where we have different classes for different age group. But right now we're just having uh, sort of uh, impromptu and combined classes. Uh, so uh, we want our children to be part of that Sunday school because that is where they learn the word of God. Praise the Lord. Um, and then uh, this afternoon, uh, those who uh, be going to the, our Baulevu ministry uh, from 3 p.m. Uh, from Narere Makoi Nasori Life Group. Uh, so so the, some families will be going to Baulevu this afternoon from the, that area. And um, cleaning flower arrangements for this coming weekend will be by Suva, uh, Life, Suva Life Group. So we have all these different area ministries and they are involved in various things in our church. So families from those areas are scheduled uh, every, every week to do certain things in our church here and, in, and for our ministries. All right, and uh, that's all for, for, for the, in terms of the announcements. And, uh, and I'll invite you to just stand with me and, uh, as we, and take out your offerings and your tithes and just have it in your hand as we'll uh, commit that to the Lord uh, before we dismiss our service. So let's all stand and uh, have our tithes and offerings in our hands and we'll commit that into the Lord's hands. Praise the Lord. And I like to join. You can pray for the offering. I'm getting their names right. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that has been heard. And may we be led throughout the week by the word that has been spoken to us, O God. Lord, give us strength and the ability, O God, to go by safely to back home, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's sing a song as the offering has been collected.
usually 11 o'clock service we have uh, children's uh, church uh, downstairs but uh, because most of our teachers are away so we're trying to arrange volunteers to look after them so uh, we apologize for that but we know even if they're in the service they are experiencing and hearing what the lord is doing so so it's a good thing they're here or downstairs they're still listening to the word of god praise the lord amen it's good to have you all i'd like to suggest you to come and uh, just say our final prayer and uh, conclude the service god bless you praise the lord let us all bow our heads and pray heavenly father we come before you lord god almighty you are great father we thank you for today lord i thank you for all the lives that are here those that have also joined us online father we thank you for the word we thank you for um the offerings we thank you for everything lord Father, you are the source, and we pray and we commit this week unto your hands. Father God, uh, we thank you that we're going to journey the week with you, and your Holy Spirit is going to lead us and guide us, strengthen us in every situation that we're going to be going through. And Father, I pray and I thank you and commit every one of us unto your mighty hands. Thank you Father. We give you all glory and all honor. In Jesus most powerful name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Uh service is uh finished now. Um I I did this this morning and uh, I'll I'll do it again. Um those I know there's some who have come and they want a special prayer or they need prayer and uh, if you that person Uh, you, you can just stay back uh, on this side for a few minutes and and what we'll do is we'll pray for you and uh, on the other hand i know you you some of you love praying and you would like to pray for others so i'd li- also ask you to come this side and we'll all pray uh, for those who need prayer and we'll pray for each other it won't take long uh, so uh, if you can spare a few minutes if you need prayer just uh, please make your way on this side and we will some of us uh, or all of you or those who want come on the side and we'll pray for those need so but the others you are most welcome to uh, go home now so god bless you